I really want to take it to the next one is in back home in uh, here in, in North America. Cities challenges, as I was saying, okay. The cities have a tremendous problem because of the assets are old, like 75 years or 50 years old, right? So EPA has come into the picture saying that the water quality has to be great. I mean, there's a certain standard which has been laid. Because of that and the lead contents in the water, there's something called consent degree has been there. So it's an agreement between state, city, or municipalities with the EPA. And they said that over the course of the time, you have to upgrade your infrastructure. Very important. Why? The, you know, the water quality has to be good. Your citizen has to be healthy. And most important thing is if there is any, uh, any penalty for that, it is two times the penalty. It's not just you know pay the penalty and move on. And also, most important thing in our political environment, the mayors and the commissioners are really on the edge to ensure that that question never comes in, especially the Flint incident, what, is, what has happened there. So people are very conscious about it. So consent degree is really driving. It's over 50 big cities has been asked to support that. And what happens is each uh, fine. So consent degree is basically uh, the wastewater and the freshwater pipes are all together, right? So obviously you were not expecting the fresh water, which is we are drinking, to get uh, come along with the wastewater, right? Which is, so the, the EPS said you need to have separate networks for that. So each spill, in, in their terminology, they call it a spill. Is each spill is costing the city, uh, depends upon what the consent degree, but on, on average about a quarter million dollars. So they are trying to save that dollar money, which is there in the form of you know, the fines, how they can do better. Uh, proactive maintenance, obviously that is helping them to get more uh, uh, value of that. Same problem, sparse data and regulatory spill reporting. Very important for, especially as I was talking about the 50 cities of North America. And most important thing, how do we, you know, take the technology component of it and make it very user friendly? And uh, so, just to give you an, an idea, when we started working with the city, uh, they didn't have any information. In fact, let me put it this way, they had lots of data, trust me. So they had an Excel sheet, you talk about everything is there, okay? What we did is, over the, we took all the data and made sense of that, that was the first step. Really simplified, made reports, or for that matter, you know, on visual, in the map form. The second thing what we did is using our experience and the client's expectations, we created a model on top of it. Now, we capture the historical data, we capture the, the flow meters which are installed all over the manholes, and the weather data, we bring it all together and make predictions that this particular place, you're gonna have a spill. So before the spill happens, a crew member is already there. It's a huge asset for them. And situation like what we had, uh, right now in Sacramento and other in the California. If we had the technology, I'm sure there will be a lot of anxiety being taken away. So the city it really does a very good job of telling the residents of that particular area that there's likely to be a spill. So we are working and you know trying to be more proactive. So citizens are very happy about it, which is great. I'll move to a demo and I'll just show it to you what we have built for, for Thames Water. Just to give an idea, you know, uh, how we are really simplified the whole process. So if you see, this system is a live system which is being used by Thames Water and Thames. Just to give an idea, which you saw the, from the, uh, uh, some history about it. They started this journey of analytics about four years back and they have matured so much that this has been replicated across of multiple European uh, state cities. Like just to give you an example, Turkish uh, government is leveraging, is planning to leverage, the city of Rome is planning to leverage it. So there's a huge, uh, what sort of adaption of this one because there's a value to it, right? So on, on just to again, as I said, visualization is hugely important. The blue colors are the water, which is the fresh water on the left-hand side, and this is on the, uh, the uh, what do you call it as? at the wastewater side. What I'm planning to show, what I'm trying to show you is, is the life system. Now it looks very complex by the way. Think about it. This really looks complex. This has been built as, and this system is been, or this screen is on operation center. And they, they have a huge screen, like how, yeah, but it's on one operation control center, they use it. What we did was, and working with them, is how do we digitize the paper which all the crew members carry with them? Huge important, because people on the field, 
are very, just to be, you know, are very hesitant to use the technology. So how do we empower the people to use this? So this is mobile centric. So people, the crew members can actually see it there. And as you can see, right now things are working fine. So on the, this one, on the uh, top uh, left, you can see all the alerts, and I'll show it to a different screen that there are certain alerts which are happening. So what is this doing? Actually, you can see all the water flowing in there, all the pump stations and everything in the city of London, okay? The best part about it is we are getting into the predictive or saying that, okay, if there is any aberrations based on the levels which has been set, alerts are being sent in the mobile to the crew members who are allocated for that particular uh, uh, plant or whatever is there. So now we are historical data, real-time data, now we're getting into more into AI part of data there. So I'll just show it to you where right now. Uh, so simplified, people who are used to working re really made it really simple for them to use. Uh, So as you can see, something is I mean, blinking right now. So this is a real-time analytics which is, we are, which is happening. So we are leveraging all the data, historical data, and these are the alerts. These are the real-time alerts telling you. Why it is coming, you can see that you know, this particular, there is a 66% uh, uh, above the normal. Okay. So that's been set up by the business saying that, yes, we want to have alerts at that particular level. So it is very customizable for that matter. But what is more important is that it, it is using the historical data and real-time data as well as the future data and making that predictions, and which is so intuitive for anyone. So crew members can make decisions based on that. Very important. The other thing is, which is important is that I'll show you some of the reports which are there. We have been able to collate that and management can make decisions and the government can make decisions based on how the performance has been there. So now you're looking at historical data which has been there, but now you're based on the models which has been built, you can make additional analysis of that. So this information is sent back to the government and it has been there. So. The other thing which, I, which is very powerful is what we have done is from a technology perspective we're really demystified so uh, what we found when we work with certain clients is they say we want x software because that's been leveraged across the organization we said that's okay we are not going to come back and say okay use xyz technology whatever is available and use the cloud technology to make your business decision which is much cheaper so what you're seeing right now is 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 the Again, this is a real-time system which is working in. Yeah. Oops. So what you are seeing is the city of London's actual physical assets. When I talk about the physical, the pipes, pumps, and everything is there, is laid out here. Now, there are colors which is depicting based on what the business is looking for. But the most important part is that at any point of time, you get the real-time information at for each of them. Okay? Now, data is depicted in multiple shape or form. You can look in the visual way or in the you know, reports or whatever is conducive or whatever makes sense from the business perspective. I'm just going to zoom. So the data, this is the graph which is there, which will be coming as you can see. So at one single click, I can see everything. You know, so this data is actually making predictions in the previous, you know, uh, uh, the screen what I showed it to you guys. So again, 
taking technology off from the whole concept is what the business is trying to accomplish. So, and uh, one thing which I want to show you here too. So on the left hand side, as you can see, there are, you know, based on your user preference, whatever you want to see, uh, it can be done, uh, it can be picked up. So, so in addition to that, what we have done is correlated all the work orders. So let me give a scenario what happens in a water industry, okay? So the plants are, are actually treating water, okay? And the, you're getting the water from the reservoir, the plants are treating it, then it comes to the water distribution to our, our house as a consumer. From consumer, it goes back as a waste to the waste treatment plant. So there's a separate water dis uh, a wastewater network which is there, then it goes to the you know, treatment plants. So that's a typical cycle of that. What we have done or with working with, this, uh, with the client, with Thames, is we have also connected with the work order. So the system, so there's a separate system which generates the work order. So we are able to integrate that work order information. So it, before a situation or before a burst happens, the work order has already been issued, okay? So the, once the work order is already being issued, the crew members are already being sent. So now it's all your you know, predictions, data, and everything is coming into the picture. So before the burst happens, or you know, you're trying to be uh, uh, agnostic of what the situation is gonna be there, and you're making a business decision to ensure the customer service is on the top priority. So Teams is using one of the city in, in, in uh, North America is using it. There are multiple cities in, in within you know, North America who are really interested to see that leveraging the data to make good business decisions. So this is just a sample. It's a very exhaustive tool which has been built in and there are reports around as you can see on the top of that. So uh, this is very important for, for the plant operators. So they can see how much of chemicals is using and they can plan based on that. So. Uh, So you can go back to history like four years or 10 years and see how the trending is there. So just to give you a sample of the, the art of possible. So coming back to you know, the first slide of three things, three, uh, uh, my pillars, what I call it as, you have the regulators, you have the operators and the customers, the technology, the big data analytics has the ability to bring it all together in a really intuitive fashion. It's no more uh, what I call it as demystifying technology for us. Pause it for, I just want to talk about it. Any questions, I'm happy to answer both from an industry technology perspective too. So. Sure. Do you see this industry going down the same path as electricity and having a intensive smart meters at retail? Yes, so a lot of cities are actually implementing smart meters. So you are absolutely right. The difference in power industry and water is that, I mean, again, to really simplify, wires you can see. You know, when you're seeing the transformers, everything, you can see, and if there's a problem, if something is not working, you can pinpoint where the problem is. However, for water industry, everything is underneath that. So if you take a step back, the industry like, you know, oil and gas, very much similar. Water, very much similar. Power, all of these things are correlated for that matter. And a lot of cities are implementing or spending a lot of money to put smart meters as well as sensors across the whole network because, again, one of the classic examples is leakage and burst. They spend a lot of time and money in fixing that without knowing what they are fixing. So that's where the shift is uh, happening around there. Can you tell us what uh, the effort, the resources, and timelines for a project like the one in London that would take? London is very exhausted. Just to give you an example is they, they had a journey for five years and it was not just a technology aspect. They were trying to transform their business also, right? So um, the point is like, because it's a private entity, they had the longer duration for that. So it took about the, uh, three and a half years to build the system, okay? But they started reaping the benefit in, for in six months itself because they went in a very modular approach saying that I want to focus on X, then Y. Like wastewater was very important for them. 
So they really focused on that because they were in, uh, uh, putting a lot of money in capital, invest, uh, capital improvement plans, right? So they made a business decision and this really helped them to make, say that if I'm gonna be spending a billion dollar to upgrade my system, now you are making business decision based on the data, right? So that was a huge, so over the course of the time, they really uh, returned, they got the return on investment much quicker than what they have planned. So short answer is yes, it, is, it took them longer, but now with the technology, and again, going back four years back, there were technology, Amazon was just coming in, people were not so much, uh, you know, and the other software technology was not so uh, matured enough, but now it has become much more, uh, much more matured. So what we are seeing is now, in especially when we are talking to the newer clients, is much shorter. Like we are within, we start seeing the results within eight to ten weeks. It's that small, right? So because the technology is there, we know the use cases, we know the business pain. It's much easier to put it all together. So eight to ten weeks, and that's what we are working with some of the cities here in North America, and, and they they love it because they 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 have been struggling for the last so many years. It's their ability to look at the information and data in a much more intuitive fashion within three months or whatever, 90 days, is huge for them. Any involvement by your group in the uh, state of California groundwater management? Yes, so uh, I'm working on the, with the DWR, uh, and I've been also, we, we participated in an open data challenge. Uh, the best part about, you know, the California state of government is you have 100 years of data, huge. And when, when we were doing that open data challenge, we said, wow, you guys are already ahead. So you don't have to worry about the data for that matter, which traditionally everyone has been struggling. And so we are, the way Accenture is looking is, is not, uh, is the how do we improvise the performance and the citizens to give that information back in that meaningful fashion. So. Uh, Department of Conservation, we are working with, we, we are working with Depart DWR for that matter, because this is a technology which can be embraced by everyone and there's a uh, more value towards that, so. Great, uh, thank you, thanks a lot, really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy the session. Any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, my card is here, and more than happy to provide information about it, so. Thank you, appreciate it.